Four Hanover men lose murder appeal. Four men who were convicted for fatally stabbing an 18-year-old, Javine Jones of Claremont, Hanover, 42 times on October 9, 2009, and dumping his body beside a river, have lost their appeal to have their murder convictions overturned. The Court of Appeal described the murder as heinous and gruesome and emphasized that the deceased was essentially butchered. The appellants are Alex Hemmings, Travis Finley, Hakeel Scott, and Denny Williams of Claremont. Jones, who was also known as Tyson and Heartless, was stabbed 35 times to the front of the neck and the other wounds were to the chest and left side of the back. The men had given caution statements in which they admitted that Scott stopped Jones and they all dragged the body through bushes to the river. However, at the trial in Hanover Circuit Court, the men, who were each 19 years old at the time of the offence, said the police had assaulted and threatened them and so they were forced to give the statements. They said the statements which were given in the presence of lawyers that on the night of the murder, the deceased had confronted them about a missing gun and told them that the men from the Bone Crusher gang were coming to shoot them if they did not show up the gun as well as their family. The men were convicted of the murder on November 21, 2016 and sentenced on January 9, 2017 to life imprisonment. The judge ordered Scott to serve 30 years before he was eligible for parole, while the other men were ordered to serve 25 years before parole. On the grounds of appeal, was the judge error in not upholding the no-case submission and freeing the men based on the circumstances in which the caution statements were given. King's counsel Lord Anthony Clifford and attorney at law Hugh Thompson, instructed by Clifford, Thompson and Shields, who represented the appellants, had also submitted that the judge should have left manslaughter for the jury's consideration in the case of Williams, Finlay and Hemmings. Crown counsel Paula Sue Ferguson and Carlin Wright said in response that a direction in the manslaughter would not have been appropriate because the evidence pointed to the men as accessories to the murder. The court compromising Justice Paulette Williams, Justice Coyle Edwards and Justice Nicole Simmons said that although Scott inflicted the injury, there was no evidence that the other men distanced themselves from Scott's action. The court in dismissing the appeal last week deducted one month, two weeks and five days from the sentences for the men who were in custody before they were sentenced. Hurricane Beryl blows July to September growth. The passage of Hurricane Beryl earlier this year plundered economic gains for the country as gross domestic product GDP output is estimated to have declined by 2.8% during the July to September quarter, reversing some 12 constituents quarters of growth since the outbreak of the novel coronavirus pandemic. The PIOG, in its last report, had said that expectations was for the economy to contract within the region of 0.01% to at negative 1.0%. PIOG Director General Dr. Wayne Henry, speaking at the quarterly briefing on Wednesday in which he released a preliminary estimate for the GDP performance during the third quarter period, said the output for almost all sectors fell down as both goods producing and services industries contracted at 6.5% and 1.2% respectively. The performance, which largely stemmed from the adverse impact of hurricane burial and other hydraulical events, the director said affected growth for a number of the country's key industries. For agriculture and fisheries, domestic crop production was severely affected, with 13 of 14 parishes recording a decline in hectares reaped. The mining and quarry industry was also adversely affected as hurricane caused infrastructure damage to the Rocky Point port and this necessitated the diversion of alumna export to an alternative port as well as tempered production. For the hotel and restaurant sector, the cancellation of flights and diversion of visitors to alternative destination adversely affected the country, he said as he outlined some of the effects during the briefing held Wednesday. Additionally, he said electricity and water was also affected as the industry experienced significant damage and loss as a result of destruction to infrastructure assets caused by the hurricane. Sections of the island were negatively impacted by the delays in restoring electricity, which had implications for production across all industry. Transport, storage and communication 
also became affected. Following the course of Jamaica's international airports and air drones and the consequential temporary sessions of travel to the island and damage to telecommunication systems, limited internet and phone access. The passage of the powerful Category 4 hurricane on July 3rd which severely rotted sections of the island's southeast coast outside of the macroeconomic impact also left significant damage and loss estimated at $32.2 billion, or 1.1% of the country's GDP. Damage and loss in the infrastructure sector accounted for almost 50% of the total at $15.9 billion, led by damage to transport infrastructure at $10.3 billion, followed by damage to electricity infrastructure at $4.1 billion, Henry noted. Outside of the badly damaged agricultural sector, which contracted by 13.5% and mining by 15.2%, both manufacturing and construction from the goods producing industry also recorded downturns of 2% and 2.8% during the review period. Within the services industry, the usually dominant hotel and restaurant tourism sector was also among several others to have contracted, decreasing 2.1% after July to September visitors' arrival, dipped 3.1% to total 633,993. Similarly, nine-month outturns weighed by recurrent challenges saw the performance of the real GDP decrease by 0.4% for the Jamaica to September period. The PIOJ director in forecasting a negative outlook for the local economy said the projection is for the economy during the remainder of this calendar and fiscal year to further contracted. For the current October to December quarter, it is projected that the change in real value added will be within the range of negative 0.15% to 0.0% and negative 1.0% to 0.0% for the full calendar year, January to December 2024. Looking ahead, the expectation is that all industries, with the exception of agriculture, construction, hotels and restaurants and other services, to record growth in the short term. The construction industry is anticipated to be impacted by the downturn in capital expenditure on infrastructure work due to work stoppages associated with the hydraulical events and the resultant delays in the disbursement of funds. For the hotel and restaurants and all other service industries, the continued impact of the travel advisories as well as industrial dispute, which impacted operation at some hotels, are also expected to temper the performance Henry further noted, underscoring the impact for these and other shocks, which have hindered the country's ability to realize sustainable economic growth, the director stressed that the need for government to re-examine the prioritized plan and initiatives needed to address the challenges that have hindered the country's ability to foster more robust and sustained growth. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.